too. <laughs> That's not the He's the beginning. He's the beginning. The yeah. end is all the so if After five episodes, guys, you see that still, we like this kind of things. Hello, world, and welcome back to the fifth episode of The Amazing Cards. And now, new year, new episode, and we are still here. Yeah, guys, it's incredible. 2024, new season of The Amazing Cards. So what are we talking about today? Today, we'll, we'll face a topic that I think that every Android developer faced in his life. With this very simple use case, man. The use case is, I want to show a single live event, like a toast, a dialogue, something that appears once in the screen, never again. Hmm. So you're talking about something that happens just once, we don't want it to happen again, but at the same time, we don't want to lose this event, so it's important that this event gets delivered. Exactly. It should be very easy, no? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this is one of the basic things that we do as developers, right? We show it's a toast. Basic. But what happens? Is it, is it difficult today? It is strangely difficult. If we start a bit with the historical part, if we go to late data, for example, this is successful in a transaction, you will see this toast all the time. For example, you change orientation, you go in background and you go again in foreground. So exactly, yes. Yeah. So Live Data had this buffer that whenever the screen uh, was brought back into view, it would re emit its latest value. So if you had uh, the state show toast, it would again show the toast indefinitely until you reset the state. What was the workaround in that case? We invented the single live event. We, as a community, as Androider, and then it became a standard de facto. But let's go nowadays. So, okay, we had live data once, NVDM, we moved to MVI, model view intent. Model view intent, what was the name of the model? Model view intent. Nowadays, we have state flow, shared flow, flow, channels. We have all this kind of amazing stuff which we can use. True. Even live data you can use nowadays with view model. Absolutely. You know, though? It has been frowned upon in the industry. It's not deprecated officially, like data, but nobody really uses. Flow is considered to be much more powerful. You, have, you can do the same as you did with live data, but only much more. But sometimes there is magic in the simplicity. And live data did a few things, but it, it did it well. And single live event, I think it was also frowned upon by developers. It was considered like an anti pattern, something mm -hmm. that if you need to do this, probably there is some code smell in your project. Okay. That's why it was never also officially included in the framework. Um, so, as you said, today, what do we have today? Today, with Compose, we have this concept of the state, since MUI is based on states and events. So, you, I will start, for example, with a state flow. Mm -hmm. The state, state flow, I change the state in the state flow. This is what I will do. Also, you know the examples in Google, in Android, are like that. But what is the problem with the state flow, man? The state flow is cons uh, considered to be like the official replacement for live data. Yeah. So we will have the same problem that we mentioned uh, a few moments uh, ago, that if you don't clear the state, it will be re-emitted every time there is a configuration change or every time your application comes back to the foreground. So if you have a toast, you will be seeing a bunch of toasts stacked on top of each other. And obviously this is not very good user experience. This introduces the need for reset, as we said. For example, you have a variable that say show toast, let's make it very simple. And you have to copy all the state flow and change that show toast to now. You have to remember to change it to now. Otherwise, all the time that you change orientation, both ground for ground, you will see this toast appearing. So we can say that this tool has the positive is that we cannot lose the event, the event will be shown eventually. Yes. And the negative is that you need to do some manual labor in order not to have the event reoccurring all the time. You have to remember it. Exactly. And the problem is when you have a big team that there, you have many developers in the team, it's possible that some merge requests, um, somebody forgets to reset the state and then you get this um, unpleasant side effect. But this sticks totally to the mod model view intent. This is perfectly. We are changing the state and the view is reacting to the change of states. What is the first thing that uh, is suggested by Google is probably the usage of the shared flow. Shared flow, okay. So a hot flow. Exactly. Basically the shared flow gives you the possibility to fire and forget, basically. So you may emit just once. 
But what is the cons of shared network? As you said, it's fire and forget. So we don't get the possibility of viewing the one-time event many times, but then we get the other side, which is losing the event, exactly. having the event not being sent completely. Um, shared flow will emit the value even if there is nobody listening, which means that if you quickly put the application in the background where the asynchronous operation is uh, being handled, then you never see the toast. So you never know if it was successful. And when we say toast, we basically mean everything that can and want to be notified just once. Like uh, it could be a snack bar, it could be some small change in the UI um, that we want to appear for a limited amount of time uh, and you don't want to happening again. So we just use toast for the example, but of course you can put uh, in your scenario the equivalent that you have in your application. Exactly. If we want to make a comparison to help people to understand, it's like, uh, for example, there is a person that makes calls all the time to another person that enters the home. So I enter the home and receive a call. Okay, pleasant the first time. Yes, I'm here, everything is fine. I go out of the house, I come back to the house, another time, the same call, this is the same flow. And telling you the same thing. Tell you the same thing, yes. With the shared flow, you call. If you pick the phone, you don't pick the phone, a call happens. That's a very nice example. To better understand. I think, it, I think it's very clear. Pronto. Okay, so my package is delivered tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Hello. Yes, you told me already. My package is delivered tomorrow morning. Ah, ah I forgot to tell you. Uh, don't call me again. I, I got the message. This is a state flow call. I entered. The moment I entered, start calling me. But the problem is, I entered again. And then start calling me again. And telling me the exact same thing. Problem was I never told it that I consumed it. Now I said, okay, don't call me again. So probably I reset the state and it will never happen again. So man, we don't have any tool that can help us to avoid these two problems. We do. Um, and in my opinion, channels is a very good tool. Channels. You can use. Because what the channel basically does, it gives you uh, the best of both worlds. It gives you the ability to receive an event just once. Um, also, we, you can't lose the event. So you can make sure with proper techniques that this event will for sure be received by your UI. Mm -hmm. and, and as I said, you cannot see this event again because it's like a buffer that uh, plays once it's consumed, it gets removed from the buffer. So this event for sure will be shown just once. Are there negatives in the channel? Yes. You mentioned in the beginning about pure MVI being like uh, close to the perfect ideal. Channel creates a bit of an overhead because now you're using a different tool than the state flow. So you have to remember that, oh, for a one-time event, I'm going to use a channel. And second, this poses the risk that now the view model that emits this event has too much knowledge, too much responsibility because the view model technically shouldn't know what that this event should be shown just once. The view model should just update the state and then the view decides what to do with this. So it breaks the pure, the purest MVI. Like also breaking a bit this perfect world of state and uh, events. But it solves all the issue and also gives you the safety and the sure that for if I paid something, I want to be sure that the user see the payment successful or something like that. I don't want to lose that. Well, a toast may be, okay, it's not that important, but there is something that is single event that is important to be shown. So we cannot miss it. So shared flow probably is the worst option in this too. We can debate between state flow and nulling it, and nulling the particular field or uh, the channel. So that I agree with you, shared flow should not be considered in this case because you might miss the event. And the worst part of it is that there is no workaround. With the other problems of the other solutions, you can do something to make it happen eventually. But shared flow has a limitation. We could argue that you can put the replay attribute of a shared flow that replays a value for an amount of time, but then you bump into another problem. What is the number of replays? Should you replay three times, five times, 10 times? It creates this, it feels wrong. It seems like you're going yeah, empirical. Exactly. Right number. Exactly. 
So share flow, in our opinion, should not be used. So it's between, as you said, state flow and the channel and both have strengths and weaknesses. Um, so to conclude, state flow, you need to remember to reset the state. Not the biggest deal in the world, but also adds a lot of overhead in that. And channel solves all these problems, but now it reduces another tool that you have to remember to use. So pick your poison. What do we think about this situation? Because I was thinking while we were discussing how difficult has it become to create a one-time event and not for experienced developer, because an experienced developer can quickly grasp the idea and they will make it. But imagine entering the Android world today and you want to experiment with an application and you bump into the scenario of oh, a one-time event. And now you see all these articles, all those videos talking about this thing. And our video is not an exception in this case. What do you do as a junior developer? Probably you're overwhelmed. Probably you think this Android uh, development is not that easy after all. We're here talking about this problem for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And eventually you see that this problem was solved years ago. And now we're visiting it again and discussions upon discussions online. Are we really making our lives more easy or are we just playing? Uh, we're chasing our tail, trying to find the next perfect framework, the next perfect way to do the things. Very good point, Brian. Very good point. I was remembering that once before the, all this, I played the old uh, person. There was event bus. I hate that very event bus. There was the reactive Eric's Java. Yeah. Eric's Kotlin. For for twenty five years old, you know a lot of things. The fact that you think that I have twenty five years age or working of age. Okay. But it seems like you're working throughout all of them. It's incredible, guys. <laughs> it was nice because you already had the conclusion, man. But then we did the yes. last question. Or you can put the question before. No, I think we can go back to the conclusion. Yes. My conclusion for this uh, is that if you have something that works, because as we said, there are a lot of discussions, but if you feel that something works for you and your team, keep doing it. There's no way, there's no reason to try to search for if it's right or wrong. If it feels right to you, if it feels like the team can work, uh, then by all means, keep doing it. There is no perfect way to do the things and you shouldn't be dogmatic about trying to follow something. Uh, we have the patterns, we have the design patterns, the principles that exist, but eventually we have to tailor them to our needs. We have to adapt them, not use them as they are because they are just tools. But if you don't use them like it feels natural to you, then it's always going to be like a, uh, a foreign body into your code base. So that's my conclusion. We shouldn't make rocket science out of trivial things like that. Thank you very much for watching. We hope we, you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Perfect. Yeah, you see, in minutes, you see this. You were amazing, very nice. Yeah. Why you dumped on me? And when when you did the presentation, man, I understood everything. That's why I said, okay, let me just start. You're very good the mentor, man. Thank you, man. You're why don't man. you use this knowledge of mentoring instead of making bugs? Funny man, how can we use this knowledge? What is this? What is the rooftop? Is this good? Man, this is the fifth. You want some jingle? It's very important to have some good coffee. Can you move this closer to you, okay? You know that nice is coffee. There is the little cup in Java. It's a cup of coffee. And Java is also quality of coffee. I didn't know that. Thank you, man. Thank you for, an island, for you enlightening know. us. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hello. New year, new episode. You thought we were missing, but we are now back. <laughs> yes, we are missing people here. People not here anymore. <laughs> I put the wall in there. There's like a funeral. It's a funeral for us. Our departing friend. Hey, departing. Hey, your boy. Say this again.